you can proceed, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome everyone to the Bradford West Goldenberry Committee of Adjustment meeting. And at this time, I would like to call this meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. And uh, with that, we get started. The adoption of the agenda, the committee, the agenda dated March 24, 2021. Be approved as circulated. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Rick, seconder, I missed it. Amir, all in favor? Approved, thank you. Uh, Madam Secretary, do we have any declaration? Oh, I'm sorry, members, do we have any declaration of pecuniary interest? None, thank you. Um, adoption of the past minutes, uh, of the past minute, um, the minutes from the last meeting, uh, dated February 24, 2021, that the minutes be adopted as circulated. Uh, it was attached to the agenda as circulated. Do I have a mover for that, please? Rick, seconder, Mr. McLean, all in favor? Approved, thank you. Uh, Madam Secretary, do we have any correspondence if, if relevant to uh, bring forward? Uh, no, none. Thank you. Order of business and hearing of applications uh, is an introduction. Uh, the purpose of this meeting, uh, welcome to the Bradford West Goldenberry Committee of Adjustment meeting. This meeting is a statutory electronic public hearing held pursuant to the Planning Act to consider applications requesting consent and or minor variances from the provisions of the municipality's zoning bylaws. In accordance with the Municipal Act and the town's procedural bylaws, this committee of adjustment meeting is being held electronically with no in-person attendance. As per the Planning Act, the committee shall hear the applicant and every other person who has pre-registered with the Secretary Treasurer who wishes to be heard and in favor of or against any application. Written notice of tonight's hearing was provided to the applicant, prescribed agencies, adjacent property owners, in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act and applicable regulations. Signage was also provided on the subject properties. This electronic meeting is being live streamed to the town YouTube channels and will be recorded for later viewing. The explanation of the meeting procedures for each application that will be considered tonight, the following process will occur. I will briefly outline the purpose of the application. The applicant, agent, or representative will then be invited by the committee to make a presentation on the proposed application. However, however one is not required. It is the applicant's decision whether to wish to speak or let the application proceed on the merits of the information as received. I will invite the secretary treasurer to present any additional correspondence received for the application being considered. I will then invite the committee members to comment and ask questions on the application. Please raise your hand when you wish to speak. Following any initial comment from the applicant, I will ask the secretary treasurer to invite members of the public who have registered to make an oral statement in relation to the application. Those members of the public who wish to speak must clearly state their name and address as information is being recorded according to the Municipal Act and the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. I will form part of the public, it will form part of the public record. Each individual may speak only once on, a, on an issue, and once discussion has commenced in respect of the motion, no further presentation shall be made. Please ensure that all questions and or comments are directed through the chair, and if relevant, I will request the appropriate person to respond. It should be noted that the applicant will be given the opportunity to respond to any questions or comments that the committee feels relevant. Should the committee make a decision approving or refusing an application, the secretary treasurer shall issue a written notice of decision subject to the requirements of the Planning Act. Upon issuance of the notice of decision, a 20 day appeal period commences during which the applicant or the public 
may appeal the decision of the Committee of Adjustment to the local planning tribunal, um, appeal tribunal, subject to the requirements of the Planning Act. A copy of the decision of the committee will be sent to the applicant and to each person who provided written comment and or participated electronically or by counsel at the hearing and who has filed with the secretary treasurer a written request for notice of the decision. Owners and agents will automatically be notified. You may obtain copies of the reports being considered tonight by contacting the secretary treasurer Committee of Adjustment via email at planning info at townofbwg.com or call 905-775-5366, extension 1400. That was a long one. The, um, the first application for this evening to be um, considered is minor application number D13-21-04. The owner are Michael and Heather Cameron. Uh, the applicant is Michael Cameron and the location of the property is 52 Ruffley Street, part of lot 109 on plan 51M610 being part four and on plan 51R28676. The purpose of the application. The, apl the applicant is seeking relief from zoning bylaw 2010-050 as amended, respecting the interior side yard and the rear, rear yard setback in the residential 2R2-1 zone to facilitate the construction of an additional sunroom. With that, Mr. Cameron, would you like to speak or Mrs. Cameron? Um Sure. So uh, it was good. I, you know, appreciate the opportunity to see you today and, and you know, have you look at the yard. Um, basically, we're, we're looking to remove the existing deck that we have and replace it with um, a three season screened in room that would, uh, if in essence, replace the same exact footprint of the, uh, the existing deck. Um, and uh, you know, I'm not too sure what else to say. I'm, uh, you know, excited about the opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. So to confirm the um, minimum requirement rear yard um, requirement is 7.5 meters. Yep. Uh, you're, you're requesting that that be 6.20 meters. And the side yard uh, right now, it's uh, requirements is 1.2 meters and you're requesting that it be 0.61 meters, correct? Yep. For the records, thank you. Um, and Madam Secretary, is there any additional correspondence on the application? Yes, there is. Um, so we had some comments from our finance department um, and their comments were basically to say that they didn't have any concerns or objections to the application. Um, we also got comments from Enbridge and they as well said that they do not object to the proposed application. Um, however, they reserve the right to amend their development conditions and that's just their standard wording. Um, and then we also received comments from a nearby neighbor um, and she is not in attendance tonight and has asked that I read out her letter to the committee. So for the record, uh, this is from Sabrina Cameron of uh, 50 roughly next door to 52 roughly the subject property. Um, so she said to committee of adjustment from Andrew and Sabrina Cameron, we are writing to respectfully request that your committee refuse the request for variances before you today for 52 roughly street, Bradford, Ontario. The applicant is seeking relief from several provisions of the existing zoning bylaws and setbacks for the area to build a sunroom structure at the rear of their property. As residents of 50 Roughly Street, we are concerned about the impact this proposal will have on the local area and property values. These include concerns regarding the height of the structure and the number of variances they have been, that have been requested, resulting in overdevelopment of the lot. If approved, we believe this application for variances will a, set a precedent for future applications and will impact the stability of this residential neighborhood. This will set a precedence for other residents in the neighborhood to apply for similar variances. It is our belief the size of these does not justify any significant sized additions. 
If this request is approved, it is not unrealistic that other requests of this nature would be made in the future. With this comes overdevelopment lots relative to existing lot sizes. B, have a negative impact on property values for the adjacent properties. Simply put, people do not want to be looking at a structure in their adjacent backyards. With these requested variances, it would indicate the size and height of the structure will be significant in size, therefore creating unwelcoming views to potential buyers of our properties in the future. C, as original property owners since 1999, we do not believe that the original subdivision proposal approved by the town would have assumed there would be any further buildings additions on the existing footprint of these lots based on size and structure. These lot sizes are not made for additions to be placed onto the current landscape. D, the current bylaws and setbacks were created by the town and are in place for this exact reason. It is to protect the footprint of the properties and stigma of the neighborhood. With these points in mind, we respectfully ask your committee to consider these concerns raised and refuse the request for variances related to this application. We would like to thank you for your consideration. Kind regards, Andrew and Sabrina Cameron. And those were all the comments that I received for 52 roughly. Committee members. Okay, thank you. Um, committee members, um, can we start with Mr. McLean? If you have any questions? None. And um, Rick Turner. Yeah, just a, a quick question. So my understanding is this is just, you're taking the footprint of the deck and you're now enclosing it essentially. That's what you guys are doing? That's right. I mean, I'm going to remove the existing deck and, and as Mario saw today, you know, it either needs to be, you know, maintained or, or replaced. And yeah. So it, it just made more sense to do it, you know, all at once. But yeah, the exact same footprint, essentially, it's it's going to be a little more of a perfect rectangle than it is today. But other than that, um, that's it. Okay, well, thank you. That's, that's all I have. That's true. Uh, Andrew, no questions. Mr. Amir, can't hear you. No question. No questions. Thank you. Um, for clarification, was this structure going to be like a summer, like a screened in, or is it going to be a um, screen? Screen. So, screen for sort of years. like three season rooms. So, I'm going to, I'd like to do like an outdoor fan and like infrared heaters but i'm i'm not glassing it in or anything no water no gas okay thank you and with that um we're at the point where i'm going to ask the members of the committee to make a motion to approve or not to approve the application uh th there was nobody else that wanted to speak to this one this is everyone has spoken that needs to speak on this behalf uh, to my understanding there's no okay. Public. And I'll put together a motion to approve the application uh, subject to the conditions laid out in the staff report. The planning report, sorry. Okay, is there a seconder? Mr. Andrew? All in favor? All in favor, unanimously approved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are we uh, able to drop or? from the call yeah thank you so much thank you at this time yes yeah thank you very much thank you the next application is minor variance application d13-21-05 the owners is joseph and olga lawton and the application is by Joseph and Olga Lawton. And the location of the property is 13 Romanelli, uh, I believe it's Romanelli Court, uh, lot 158, it's on plan 51M-1075. Uh, the applicant is applying for relief from zoning bylaw 2010-050 as amended, respecting the setbacks for accessory buildings and structure encroachment of the residential one exception R1-3 uh, star two zone to permit an uncovered deck uh, to encroachment more than currently permitted by the zoning bylaw in the rear and the side yard. Uh, the minimum setback requirement is 0.6 meters. 
requested zero meters and the minimum setback for um, rear lot line is 1.2 meters and the request is 0.1 meter. Um, good evening, Mr. Lawton. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having me here today. Okay. Hear me? Would like to make um, additional comments or? Um, I'm pretty sure by this point, all pertinent information has been handed in. Um, all inspections were completed. Um, I don't know if everybody present was aware of the circumstances surrounding um, the deck. Um, so if I may have a minute, I'll explain, or do I need to? Um, sir? Oh, you're, you're free to speak. Um, when they finished the, um, the grading in the back, um, they left a, a rather large swale or drainage ditch along the back lot line, um, creating a very um, slippery slope. I myself fell down it, my wife fell down it, my kid fell down it trying to play ball. Uh, we've been working with the town diligently for the last four years trying to resolve the problem and the situation. Um, they've had surveyors come out to see what can be done. Um, the water was supposed to drain from our site to the street uh, to the north. Um, just for various reasons. Um, in some reports, I'm sure you can find the answers as to why. Um, it has affected a lot of places here um, and a lot of people. Um, we tried planting in that swale um, trees, plants, shrubs, and subsequently lost about $1,200 worth of plants to over water as was gained up in the, in the ditch. We hoped that it would, it would good plants would, would soak up most of that and get rid of it for us. Um, also breeding ground for mosquitoes, unfortunately. Um, so the deck is designed to ride over that swale, um, which has a, um, exactly a 24 inch drop, actually just under a 24 inch drop to the middle. Um, the deck could not be built out from the lot line at the back because the post supporting it would be directly in the middle of the swale, obstructing the flow of water. Um, from the side lot of the yard, that would create a two foot drop and that would be a health and safety hazard for anybody going back there. Any animals falling in there wouldn't be able to get out and God forbid anybody's kid go back there and won't be able to get out or to get hurt. Um, this is the reason why we uh, were requesting this today. Thank you. Um, Madam Secretary, do we have any correspondence, additional correspondence on the application? Yes, so we have, again, comments from our finance department saying that they do not have any objections to the application, as well as Enbridge stating that they do not object to the application as well. Um, in addition to finance and Enbridge, we did receive comments from nearby neighbors. Um, I will read the first one out to you um, as they are not in attendance, so they're not able to speak to it. I'm um, just pulling it up here. So. This is from 21 Romanelli Crescent. So it's Fahim Abdul and Novera Abreen. And I apologize if I pronounced your names wrong. Um, so they're saying, hi, Danielle, town of Bradford. Reference to the notice of public hearing for minor variance application number D13-2105, lot, lot number 158. Our reply is as under. Commentary. We moved to this property in December 2016 with the surprise in the spring of 2017 that there was a swell in the backyard. The builder in town has not given us any information like drainage drawings, etc. The grade of the house behind our property is lower. They showed concern to us because of the higher water level in their backyard. To cut short, all the 10 houses north of my house and the backside approached town to bring the builder accountable to have proper drainage system for this swell. All the water from 23 Romanelli Crescent flows northward in this swell through my backyard and supposed to drain at the Rutherford Road to the curb and gutter area. But we have never seen it in the last five years, any sign of water on the curb or road on Rutherford, which shows that the slope of this swell is not properly designed, constructed with no option for catch basin sub drain, for which I have strong reservations with town engineering department. Whereas south of 23 Romanelli, all the water flows into the manhole in one of the house backyards, which is the proper way of drainage, especially when there is an elevation difference between town property line. But unfortunately, no drainage structure is on the ground towards the north side. 
Concern. Since the lot number 158 is one house next to my adjacent neighbor, the setback clauses technically does not affect my property line other than if their build up deck over the swell ditch has changed the grading of the swell running along the backyard fence. The town of Bradford should make sure that because of their deck build up on the swell ditch, my property area shall not become a swamp for which we have the right to hold town responsible to remove the problem at their own cost. Since last fall, it has noticed after rainy day, the swell had higher water level than ever before, which was been witnessed by the town representative and was documented with a note that is unusual to have that much water in the swell. It seems that the swell is not draining and water has only way to seep into the ground. Conclusion, Town of Bradford should utilize recheck the grading template to make sure that the deck buildup to the three of the properties over the swell area are not causing water buildup in the prop in my property area. The groundwater rainwater is supposed to flow through the swell rather creating a water pool pond which can lead for creating breeding ground for viruses and mosquitoes. Solution, Town Engineering Department should revisit the design drainage profile and reconfirm that it is the swell that the swell is constructed graded as per the design drawings if any drain drainage structure is required they should consider in order to avoid legal notice complaints moreover the engineering department should come with a solution to fit for all and no more hassle for the town to deal with like one resurvey the area and find out the low point and then put a structure connecting to the existing storm water system Two, design a north-south subdrain system for the total length of six property lengths up to the Rutherford curb gutter. And three, give rebate in the property tax so that the solution will be done by themselves. Um, and this is from, again, Fahim Abdul and Novera Abreen of 21 Romanelli Crescent. Um, so when receiving this correspondence, uh, we reached out to um, our town engineering staff just for any um, further comments that they wanted to make at the meeting. Um, so I do have uh, just a brief comment here from um, Gavin Watson. Um, so he has said that the application at hand, 13 Romanelli, based on observations by staff and photos provided, has not blocked the swale as they have built the deck to span the swale. At this time, we have no further comments. Um, and then I also received comments from another neighbor, um, Susanna. Uh, Chekovic, sorry if I pronounced your uh, last name wrong there, Susanna. Um, she is actually in attendance tonight, um, so I will leave it up to her if she wants to speak to the application or if she'd like for me to read out her letter. Um, no, I can read it out, no problem. Um, so just with regards to the correspondence that you had just read out, um, everything that they have indicated in their comments is 100% accurate. And I'm just here to reconfirm those same comments as well. In my email to, to the planning department and to you, Danielle, I believe, um, on uh, March the 19th, I will read to you what I um, emailed you directly. I'm writing regarding the above action that is being brought forward on March 24th to the Committee of Adjustments regarding the proposed application D13-21-5. I'm requesting that this matter be deferred to a later date until a full investigation and inspection has been completed and conducted with, respe with respect to the neighboring properties due to the existing water drainage issue. The deck and setbacks requested may not be the issue at hand. However, until a thorough inspection is conducted of the grounds beneath the deck and a complete survey is completed to the respective and neighboring properties, I am requesting that this matter be deferred. I have been in contact with Alan from planning, Doug and Gavin from engineering, and, and until there are some concrete findings about the water drainage issues and the pooling of water that is occurring, matters and approvals such as these that affect the surrounding properties should not be put forward at this time. And on top of that, we just received the written notification um, in, in our mail on Monday, which was postmarked on March the 12th. So unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to prepare for this um, committee this evening. But um, yesterday, Gavin, um, sorry, not Gavin, Tom and um, Rob did show up. Um, in order to, to take a look at uh, to take a look at the property. 
Um, and I have also um, emailed Gavin today. Um, I'm looking for some additional information in terms of any documentation and plans that I have not yet received in terms of um, the, the drainage and sewer, um, the sewage systems that were supposed to be in place along Romanelli and Ferris property. So just to reiterate, um, my, my comments are the same in terms of the other neighbor, uh, I think it was 21 Romanelli that voiced their concern, 100% ditto everything that they have indicated in their correspondence. Um, so until there has been some concrete findings and until we have con um, um, a concrete answer as to what's going on with this water issue, I don't believe that this matter should go ahead because what you're what you're looking at is visibly on the surface of what has been done uh, in the backyard of 13 Romanelli but in my opinion it still affects all of the surrounding properties do, with respect to the water drainage issues and and my other concern is also that 13 Romanelli has been sold and so the existing property owners will be moving Therefore, the new, the new um, homeowners, when they arrive, will likely have no idea in terms of what's going on or what's been done underneath the existing deck that has been installed at 13 Romanelli. Any other comments, Ben? Susan? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for the record, Mr. Um, Lawton, is that is your property being sold? Are you moving? Yes, it has. Okay. I'm going to ask the uh, committee members for. Um, for any questions and um, comments. And yes, I'll start please. with um, Amir. No question. No questions. Uh, Mr. Andrew. Uh, no questions, thank you. Mr. Turner. Uh, yeah, Mr. Line, so for how many years you, you lived there and you tried to address this with the town and you tried to plant things, how many years did that go on? Four years. Okay. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been doing it since we got in. The grading wasn't done the first year because we moved in in November. Um, the following spring, they concluded it. I came home from work and was absolutely shocked when I walked into the backyard. I even asked them to stop. Uh, stop what you're doing. Please get your equipment out of here until we figure out what's going on because this was totally unacceptable. Now, I understand what the other people are saying, and I get it. There's a lot of people affected here by this. And a lot of people have, have uh, wanted to do the exact same thing. Um, I'm, in my conversations with uh, Alan Weeb and a few other um, officials from the town, um, what came back to me was that if water sitting in a drainage ditch uh, dissipates within 24 hours, they do not consider it a problem. Um, they also said they had no findings in the two times that the um, that the surveyors were here and went over it. Um, they also told me that they weren't going to be bringing in equipment and tearing up people's backyards anymore. It's not gonna happen. Now, everybody here has fences. Everybody here has finishings in their backyard. It's been four years. Uh, we waited that long to try and get something usable out of our backyard, which is what we did. And you have the reports that state that there was it was built it passed all inspections um everything was done according to the book it was done by the law um aside from the setbacks which we are asking for and um and that's that's i don't know what else to tell you it's, it's okay, i don't i don't see i don't you, see how to tell you Pardon? went through the process for many years you just wanted to enjoy your property regardless if you're selling or not selling and you wanted to make the property usable by putting up a deck that's essentially what was being and done. safe and yeah. safe um, we don't want mosquitoes breeding down there, insects, all kinds of swamp rats, whatever is going to happen in there. Uh, the water flows out from under my deck beautifully. 
it, you can watch it from the second story as you, the rain hits it, you see the bubbles. It flows like a river right out from under my deck and into the neighbors and goes wherever it's supposed to go. But okay. it's, we have not affected the ground in any way, shape or form. Um, like again, I said, everything has passed all the pertinent inspections. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lyon. Any other questions, Rick? Rick, any questions? Any other questions? No, that, I just, that was the end. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Gavin. Uh, no questions at this time. Thank you. And I understand there's uh, one question pending from um, Susanna. Or do I have it wrong? Danielle? Sorry, I was on mute there. Um, Susanna, unfortunately, is only able to speak once to um, the application. She does have her hand raised, but I'll leave that up to you, Chair, if you want to allow her to add anything on. Well, under the circumstances, Susanna, if you can uh, address the question uh, to the comments to me and uh, it will be recorded on the, um, on the on the record. Hi. Hi. OK. Um, yes, I 100 percent agree with what Joe is saying, and I uh, completely agree that this has been an ongoing issue for the last four years. And um, he, along with some of the other neighbors, did initiate the original um, drainage issue. Um, so uh, absolutely, I agree with him. And basically, we got no answers from the town. So it's kind of disappointing as property taxpayers and homeowners in the town of Bradford that for the last four years, the town has basically wiped their hands clean of this or has always come back with some type of an excuse um, to indicate that, no, the water is, is just is, is pooling there. And as Joe indicated, they told him that it's after, if the water does not dis, uh, dissipate after 24 hours, um, then there's no issue. But yet the other day, or even today, I had a conversation with one of the other planning folks that they told me now it's after 48 hours. So which one is it? And the other concern that I have is, is that um, not only myself, but I believe Joe as well and a neighboring property at nine Romanelli, they were told by engineering that there was supposed to be um, a, drainage, a, a drain sewer installed at the back of the properties at either um, somewhere along either 13 or nine or further down that was never installed by the developer and your town officials acknowledged this and admitted this. So not only to myself, but also to the other property owners as well. Okay, that's noted. And um, it, it seems to be a, a consensus concern about the, um, the swale at the back of these properties. And um, so at this time, and also I believe that Joe indicated that he 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 sees how the water is just gushing through the back of his backyard, further along the property with, to his neighbor. So where is that water going? You know where it's going? It's not going anywhere. It's pooling in the back of everyone's backyards. And your and your officials from engineering and bylaw and 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 planning have all been out here with their cameras, with their little gadgets, surveying it, taking pictures, not once, twice, three times. And to this date, nothing has been done. Four years this issue has been going on. And we as property taxpayers are just sitting here with our hands tied waiting for answers from your respectful divisions. So where is that water going, I ask you? And Joe can confirm that as well because he's seen it. He's seen the water gushing behind our yards with nowhere to go. And it just pools there. You need to come by on a day where it's rained for one or two days and you can't even walk in the back of your backyard because it's so saturated in water that you can't even mow your grass in the back. Could build a deck. Yeah, of course, correction is like easement supposed to be down the road, not on 13. Can I add something here, please? 
you want to make one final comment, that's fine. Your response to yep. that? Um, the response is that the easement has nothing to do with mine. It was supposed to be in the neighbors or the next neighbors over. And um, again, I've been talking to a lot of these neighbors and I understand their frustration, but I highly doubt that anybody's going to come in here and start ripping apart lands again, taking down fences, and the town is going to have to pay for all that. Maybe, maybe they should consider doing what we did and make their backyard a bit usable, go through the proper channels, apply for your, your, um, your, your, your permits, and have it built and inspected properly as we did. Um, because I don't see how this is going to resolve at all. The water is, is it's always going to come there. I mean, you're looking at completely, completely destroying. I can see all the yards here, probably eight to 10 backyards and uh, with equipment and fences. And that's also part and parcel that goes with our neighbors behind us. It's also theirs as well. So maybe a consideration for the future for those folks if they want to go ahead and do what we did then go about the proper channels and have it built properly and turn it into a, a beautiful usable backyard and let the water go where it's supposed to go that's all i have to say thank you thank you um well th this is the first that i've seen and i'm sure the members first time that we've heard the uh, comments and seen the property and um at this time it's the application we've everyone has made their comments their submissions and I'm going to ask uh, the planner if he has any information to add for the record. If not, I'm going to, uh, the process is that I'm going to ask the members to um, uh, make a motion either to accept or, um, or deny the application. Uh, Thomas? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would just like to um, acknowledge that though, um, bring it back to the fact that this meeting tonight is discussing the variance at hand with regards to the deck. Um, our engineering staff have reviewed it and do believe that the grades have not been altered in a way that would disrupt the flow of water. And as such, we have no concerns and that's why planning staff are recommending the approval of the variance. But I do wanna bring it back to the variance at hand and the recommendation uh, and the application and not the greater issue of, of, the, of the drainage and the properties. Um, engineering is aware and is continuing to evaluate and and move forward with that. But I do want to bring it back to the variance um, and what is being requested of the applicant today. Thank you. And uh, before I do call a vote, I just want to remind the comment on uh, uh, if a decision is made and everyone that is here tonight has the uh, right to um, appeal the decision, whether it's in favor or against. And the, it's within 20 days of the appeal period is within 20 days, uh, commencing from the uh, what's the from the time of the decision, and you'll be getting a notice of the decision anyway. So with that, I'm going to ask the members to um, please provide a, a decision in favor or against the uh, the application. Rick. Yeah, I put a motion in favor of the application uh, subject to the conditions laid out in the report. Uh, Thank you. And do you have a seconder? Do you have a, anyone else? Amir, you're in favor or against? In favor. Can I call a vote, please? Show of hands. All four members have voted in favor of, and uh, therefore the application at this time has been approved at this level. And uh, I really um, am sensitive to the comments and the, uh, the issues and uh, thank you for participating. And, uh, but that's where the, uh, that's the decision of the, of the committee. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you also very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, next item is a uh, new business. Is there any new business or unfinished businesses to be uh, discussed this evening, uh, Danielle? Yes. So um, one of our committee members um, has informed me today that this will be his last meeting. And that committee member is Amir. Um, oh. 
So tonight is his last meeting with us and um, staff uh, has been requested to recruit an eligible member to be appointed by council to fill the vacancy. So stay tuned for that. I don't know. Okay. Yes, um, actually, uh, I sold my house. There were a few reasons that my daughter is going to the university and we were discussing the like how she's gonna manage from Bradford to so we decided to you know move in one and um, luckily we like I got a good deal and uh, we just uh, moving to uh, one in the next month you know month maybe too month. late but the go train goes right to York my daughter did <laughs> that congratulations <laughs> yeah um I have one item uh, about the uh, the conference registration, the training. Yes. yes, I was gonna bring that up as well. So there is room in the budget for one staff member and one committee member. Um, I did send out an email, I believe it was either end of last week or maybe even Monday. Uh, regardless, I sent out an email to you guys seeing if there was any interest for any of you to attend the meeting. Um, I did receive uh, some comments back, but that was just from one of our members. Um, our chair, Mario, would like to attend. So unless um, there's any other interests or any objections to that, it sounds as though uh, it'll be myself and Mario attending the conference. It's virtual in June. Um, and if there's opportunity to share those videos or any um, information from the meeting, we will do that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pull back if somebody else wishes to attend. That's not a I'm actually at a conference that whole week, so I, I'm ineligible to make it. I'm, I'm unavailable that then do so. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Just, just I'm here, you don't count anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mary, I will register you for you, that, you for that conference. <laughs> Thank you. And um, the final item is um, we need a motion to adjourn the meeting. And uh, I make the motion and I need a seconder. Amir? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, let the minutes show that tonight's meeting has been adjourned um, at 7.15 p.m.